it goes for both Chris and I. We would have both won a, a whole bunch more if the other one wasn't around, but we wouldn't have been as good a tennis player. Chris made me better than I made her better. And I think same goes for Rafa and Roger. They push each other to greater heights, especially in tennis. You know, you're only as good as, as your opponent makes you play. You can't play a fantastic tennis against a you know opponent that's not in your ballpark because you're not forced to hit those great shots or play well under pressure. So those two guys bring out the best in each other and uh, and push each other, try to find a better way to deal with with the other. That rivalry, I mean, it's just unbelievable. You won't you won't see that again. I, I don't think uh, on the men's tour of somebody playing each other that many times. Uh, it's very rare and. Um, yeah, so unless you have two top players that end up meeting each other four or five times during the year, normal players, it just by chance, maybe one year they'll play each other four or five times, you know, in the second round or third round, but then they won't see each other for two or three years. The top players, they play each other a lot more. So, but for, for to, play, to play somebody that many times, you don't have to be a top player, but for a long time. And I don't think that's going to happen again. It's just too much turnover and, uh, you know, it's a... It's, uh, it's one for the ages, so. For me, it was a slightly different trajectory against Chris. She had a pretty good head start before I became good enough to, to, to beat her on a regular basis or more often. Initially, I really couldn't beat her on any surface. Then I finally could beat her on a faster court, but I still was lacking on clay. So I'm like, okay, I'll just try to keep it close. I knew I really didn't, didn't have a chance to win. Uh, but then once I got good, then I felt like, okay, I, I can beat her on any surface, I don't care. And. Uh, and it didn't matter that much. So it was more about how well I was playing uh, as n more so than the surface that I was playing. I just became better tennis player. But then Chris got better again, and then it was you know, like almost 50-50 whether I would beat her on clay or, or, you know, I lost her a few times on grass. I beat her a few times on clay. But overall, yes, I mean, the grass favored me and, and uh, the clay favored her, and, and, and so it is with, with Rafa and, and, and Roger. They're much more even on all the surfaces, but on clay, Rafa has a huge edge, 13 to 2. So you know that uh, the odds are stacked against you, but, but I felt if I play my best tennis, I can beat Chris on, on any surface, and I can beat her on clay, even though she was the best clay court player ever on the women's tour. And I think Roger's feeling the same way about Rafa. Rafa's the best clay quarter ever, but uh, Roger is the best clay court, uh, second best clay court player of, of the 2000s, last 15, 20 years. Um, and, and he knows that he can, when he plays his best, he can beat Rafa, but three out of five, that's another story. For me, it was easy. I, I would rather, pr I, I prefer playing friends than people I didn't like. Thankfully, there weren't that many. Uh, because, uh, you know, there's still a net between you two, and I felt I played better tennis when I liked the person, and you, I could just kind of relax and play my best tennis. But if I played somebody I didn't like, I really didn't want to lose to them, and, uh, and I would get more uptight about it. Uh, so I think, you know, there is a net between you two. You only hit the ball that the, that the opponent hits, which it's still a very personal relationship on the court, but at the same time, there is that net in between, which makes it impersonal. Uh, so I, I, didn't, I didn't have an issue with, with the friends bit. And I, think, I would think Roger and Rafa would tell you the same thing, that they play better against each other because they like each other, they have respect for each other, and there's no you know, gamesmanship or anything going on. It's just let the best, be, better player win on that day. And, and so it was with, the, with Chris and me. So, and it's nice to see that. I think people sense that, and people have a hard time cheering for one against the other when they're playing each other because you're just like, okay, this is a treat and let's just enjoy it. When a rivalry first starts, um, you, you don't realize it until you go back. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, it has to have longevity and, and quality. And uh, maybe when they've played each other, maybe like 12, 13, 14 times, then you say, okay, now we get a rivalry. And, and, and with them, it happened pretty early on. I mean, when they were still, you know, early 20s or mid 20s. So, you know, we, st we, we may have 10 more years to go before this is over. So uh, that's when you just kind of cherish it and then try to see who is trying to surprise the other because you know each other so well. Uh, how do you come up with a better game plan? You know, particularly for, for uh, Roger, against as Rafael on clay what does he do what you know what what can he figure out better uh, to try to turn the tables um, so it's just fun to watch that uh, that kind of 
if they have different strategies or try to surprise one another. Well, usually I go this way, so now I'm going to surprise him that way, but he's going to think that I'm going to do that, so I'll go back to that original. You know, it's just trying to outfox each other. It becomes more difficult when you've played each other that many times and you know the patterns. It's kind of cumulative pressure because uh, you know you won't ever have that situation again. If you lose this year, you're not going to win five in a row again and have that opportunity again. So that's, this is the only time, this is the only chance you have for that. So the pressure is exponentially greater. Uh, but at the same time you play, uh, you've done it so many times, you must have the confidence that you can.